Hey guys, it's Bob Morielli here with The Tuning School, and on today's Tech Tuesday, we're going to answer the question of how can you quantify good or bad drivability? Hey guys, welcome back. So we're here in The Tuning School's Corvette. That was a nice little blast to get on the highway. Uh, but we're going to talk today about drivability and then what does it look like to quantify good or bad drivability. So let's say you have finished dyno tuning a customer's car, you send it home, they come back and they say, man, it just doesn't drive like it used to. How do you know what that really means and how can you see it on the scanner to prevent it next time? So there's a couple different parameters you can look at while you're scanning before you send it home to make sure this doesn't happen. The first thing is going to be engine speed. Sounds common sense. Most of the time you're not looking for it though. But the goal here is to just do a slow, a slow sweep through the throttle to simulate how this guy is going to leave a stoplight. Well, with not at full throttle, but a regular leaving of a stoplight. And so what you're going to do is look to see if the engine speed rises at a normal rate. So that's the first thing we're going to look for. Now, second thing, but keep in mind, RPM can fool you because the engine can increase in speed without the vehicle increasing at the same time. As the engine struggles, that can happen. So second thing, obviously, vehicle speed. We're going to look for vehicle speed to see if it kind of continues to go up as I increase the gas pedal or if it kind of rolls around a little bit. But that can also be difficult to spot. So the third thing is really, really accurate, which is going to be the third parameter of delivered engine torque. Now, delivered engine torque, you can scan for it on Fords, GMs, Dodges, doesn't name, it doesn't matter, you name it, the computer knows delivered engine torque. So what you can see is as you slowly roll into the throttle, you should see a continual rise in engine torque. And we're not talking about full throttle stuff here, but just like now, going into the throttle, we should see a slow, steady rise of torque. Now, when you get a customer bringing a car back, it's because that's not true. And the reason that's not true is there's, there's generally some kind of problem related to the work done to the car, big cams, blowers, and whatnot, where maybe the spark table isn't as smooth as it should be, or maybe the fueling isn't as good as it should be, or some area you didn't quite get to. So the, the engine will struggle, and you'll see torque kind of go up and fall a little bit, and that's generally the best indicator. But there's also one more called acceleration rate. So in order to demonstrate these things to you, let's now go over to our scan files where we've recorded actual instances of these problems happening, and we'll talk about them there. All right, guys, so welcome back. And we are here now reviewing some scans. Uh, so the VCM scanner we're looking at here is a log from a 2016 Corvette, direct injected, supercharged. After we dyno tuned it, we noticed there were some issues where Drivability wasn't quite perfect, you know, part throttle, driving it around, we, we felt as though it kind of crept up on the power and then fell off. And, and we're talking about part throttle driving around. So in order to quantify it, let's hit the first couple parameters we talked about. Engine speed. Now in this particular case, engine speed doesn't have huge signs of it, but if you look, it's kind of flat. You know, the, the throttle position does rise, 34, 35, 36. So normally you would see engine speed rise slightly, but in this case it doesn't, and it actually kind of comes down a little bit. So that's an indicator we need to keep digging. But the big giveaway in this scan really is your engine torque. So we need to quantify this problem. As we ease in the throttle, the power comes up and kind of falls off a bit, and you can clearly see it here. And here's a great example. And, you know, throttle um, 36 and engine torque 256 all the way down to 225 and then it just kind of goes up and down and these little bumps which you can actually feel very clearly and e even back here it's even more clear and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit you could see them so as you're driving you could feel it and we go from 210 200 213 202 you could feel that 10 foot pound change as you're you're slowly accelerating the vehicle so uh, those two parameters engine speed throttle uh, throttle and of course uh, engine torque being very important to look at. This is a signature you're gonna look at to see how does this car drive when you are done. The, if it looks like this, it's a problem. If it is a nice linear rise with your throttle pedal, you're fine. So now that we've examined that, let's go back on over and take a look at a Ford. Now, we're in a full throttle scan section of our 2011 Mustang GT supercharged, uh, Magnuson supercharged car. 
Now on the dyno, we felt like it ran great, didn't see any big problems. But the same type of issues crept up when we tested it on the street just to feel the drivability, but it was even more pronounced. Now Fords, as you guys probably know, typically have issues related to throttle bodies uh, and airflow related problems. So as we drove this and we eased into the throttle, we found that it would kind of go up and down and we'd see you know, power gains, power losses. So we thought, okay, let's look at our scan. Now this, we're starting with the full throttle section simply to explain the next parameter you're gonna wanna look at. Now we've created a custom math here called acceleration rate. Now acceleration rate is a very simple thing you can make where you simply take the time before and the time after and you divide it and you end up with acceleration rate in miles per hour per second which is why we're looking at it here in the full throttle section so you'll understand. So if we look here, back when we first started at full throttle, you can see here full throttle, uh, you can test it to make sure that, it, that it's working right. So acceleration rate is a little bit predictive. It looks down the road a second, in our case, miles per hour per second. So basically, if we go forward one second, we should see 63 miles per hour. So the computer is saying here, we're rising at a rate of eight miles per hour per second. So eight plus 55 is 63. So if we look at our scanner here, we're at the 32 second mark. And if we go over to the 33 second mark, we should be really close. Yep, 32.9 and 64. So we're right on. So we know that our acceleration rate is reading properly. So as you can see here, acceleration comes up pretty hard and then tends to fall off with speed building, very normal. We're going to use this as we look at a part throttle problem to determine, here we go, to determine if we can quantify how the vehicle will feel before even going out on the street. So as you can see, here's a part throttle example, same vehicle, easing into the throttle, and you see the acceleration rate slowly coming up, 6.2, 6.3, 6.6, but you'll see over here, it goes and it kind of drops, 7.1, 7.18, 7.11. So you're looking for these sort of telltale signs. This is a great parameter to look at. And of course, you see some dead giveaways here. Boost coming up and down, up and down. Throttle position coming up and down, up and down. And technically, this is throttle angle, so this is what the blade is doing. Even though, in behind it, if you look closely, you can see that we kept our pedal constant and slightly increased it. So this you could definitely feel in a very pronounced manner. So the thing is, is you can't actually feel this on the dyno, but when you go out and drive it on the street, you go, wow, this drive's terrible. How come I didn't catch this? So if you'll just monitor those parameters, engine speed, vehicle speed, acceleration rate, and of course your other, other things like scheduled torque and even throttle angle, they'll help you find these issues before you get it out, uh, testing it on the street, or giving it back to a customer and saying, hey, I think it drives great. You can quantify good drivability, drivability by finding that these problems do not exist. And if they do exist, you can find them and then go ahead and solve them. We hope you've enjoyed this Tech Tuesday. And for more high performance tuning knowledge, be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social media. And as always, stay tuned. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also check out our other videos. And if you have any interest in tuning products, check out our website.